come uh, Thursday at, at midnight, those 50 or 60,000 individuals for the most part will be released into American communities on top of the 100 or so thousand that are released already every single month. So we've got another wave and another surge here that's going to be impacting American communities uh, that's very concerning. So it's a coming 36 hours and ticking now. Disorder on the border, and it's about to get a lot worse. As he mentioned there, Title 42 expires at midnight tomorrow night. Already migrants surging toward the border in droves, overwhelming agents on the front lines. Uh, the Border Patrol now getting ready for tens of thousands to cross daily when Title 42 goes away. We are keeping a close eye on the latest developments as all of this unfolds. Senator Tom Tillis in a moment, he's got reaction and a new idea with a bipartisan bill he's introducing with Arizona Senator Kirsten Cinema. But first to the border we ride with Bill Malusian live in Brownsville, Texas, and what's happening at this hour. Bill, hello. Bill, good morning to you. Just a few moments ago, I was able to confirm with multiple CBP sources that in the last two days in a row, Border Patrol has apprehended more than 10,000 migrants who have crossed illegally each day. I'm told these are the highest single day totals ever recorded in U.S. history, and it's only expected to go up from here. Take a look at this drone video our team shot right here in Brownsville late yesterday in the evening, showing an absolutely enormous group of migrants who have crossed illegally. We've seen this every single day since we've been out here, and as you watch our drone camera move, you'll wonder, when does this line ever end? It never seems to. It is almost all single adults, predominantly Venezuelans, and I'm told that as of yesterday, here in the Rio Grande Valley sector, Border Patrol facilities are running at 140% capacity as they are completely overwhelmed by these large groups showing up every single day. And then take a look at this second piece of video. We had our drone down by the river looking into Matamoros where they are crossing from. Look at all that trash, clothing, and rubbish at the edge of the river by these migrant camps in Matamoros showing where these migrants crossed. Then we were watching as they got to the U.S. side and dropped all their trash and clothing on the U.S. side as well. A long stream of migrants crossing illegally. This is the U.S. side of the border you're looking at here in Brownsville. It is, it is, it is just a non-stop flow of illegal crossings, and it's happening on the other side of the state as well. Take a look at this other piece of video from El Paso. 3 a.m. this morning, another group of several hundred migrants who crossed illegally into El Paso's lower valley. The border is blowing up across every sector right now. Numbers we have never seen before in Title 42 has not even dropped yet. Lastly, in the meantime, human smuggling remains rampant. Take a look at this video we just got from Texas DPS dash cam showing their troopers going after human smugglers, illegal immigrants bailing out of a vehicle. You saw those black bags on those illegal immigrants back. They ended up being filled with meth. This was a bailout. You can see the meth in those bags right there. Texas DPS taking the human smuggler into custody. He ended up being a U.S. citizen from Houston, the sort of thing that happens day in and day out down here on the southern border and back out here live cbp sources also confirmed to me that as of this morning they have 28,000 500 migrants in cbp custody i am told that is also an all-time record as major stress is being put on cbp system and we still have title 42 waiting to drop we'll send it back to you It'll be quite remarkable in the coming days thank you bill bill malusian back on the border thank you Yep. Meantime, in Chicago, Mayor Lori Lightfoot declaring a state of emergency there as new video shows hundreds of migrants taking shelter inside police stations. Mayor Lightfoot saying the city's resources are now stretched to the breaking point with the arrival of more than 8,000 migrants since August. Chicago has been advertising itself as a sanctuary city for more than five years, but it is not ready to handle all the problems involved with the illegal immigration when so many actually do arrive. So also in Florida today, the governor Ron DeSantis appears to be restarting his program of sending migrants to northern Democratic run towns. The state's division of emergency management picked three companies to execute the uh, relocation program. Many consider that controversial. One of those chosen is the company that carried out last year's migrant flights to Martha's Vineyard, which is uh, off the coast of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So the countdown is on for the expiration of Title 42. Two senators are teaming up to try to fix that. 
They would temporarily extend the pandemic era policy. Let's bring in North Carolina Republican Tom Tillis. He's a member of the Senate Judiciary Committee, working with the Democrat or Independent, are we calling her? Kirsten Cinema of Arizona. And we're going to put up on the screen for everyone to see what your bill would do, but let you describe how you try to help here. Well, this, this is very simple. What we're trying to do is extend the policies that President Trump put into place in March of 2020 when the pandemic hit us. It was originally designed just to limit the inflows of people who could be infected, but it also provided the ability to return people, expel them from the country on an expedited basis. That goes away on Thursday. All we're doing is, is proposing the plain text of the title without a pandemic or without an emergency uh, health uh, enablement. So so we can get this done. We have to get it done. And you're going to, you saw that report. That report is an average report. Uh, we've been seeing the massing at the border in the past, but, but what that report points to are all the people waiting until Thursday at midnight, and they will start crossing over at 12.01, and they'll be paying the cartels hundreds of millions of dollars to do it. Yeah, I think you need 60 votes to get it passed, right, Senator? Uh, I don't know what the conversations are like in the hallway, but uh, if I, uh, we're putting up numbers here that are just extraordinary every day. We, we, we do this and we show it to our viewers and other networks choose not to. That's their decision. The definition, according to U.S. law on refugees and asylum, goes something like this. Status or asylum can be granted to those who have been persecuted or fear they will be persecuted on account of race, religion, nationality, or membership in a certain uh, social group or political opinion. Now, our reporters are down there, and they're talking to migrants, and I, I, I don't know if we've even heard an explanation for why they crossed the border that would fit that definition. It all, it all seems to be economic, all right? So you go back in your rooms with your other senators, Republican and Democrat, what do they say about that? I mean, they, Bill, they, they, uh, sorry, uh, this is U.S. law. Right, but, but, but keep in mind, under Democrat uh, presidents, Republican presidents, Democrat, independent, uh, uh, Republican judges, 80% of the ones who finally choose to say that they satisfy uh, asylum requirements are determined not to have a valid claim, 80%. So the people that we're releasing into the country and taking four or five years in some cases, if they ever show up for a hearing, we know they've only got a one in five chance of, of, of actually satisfying satisfying the asylum requirements. And even worse, if you look at uh, Chinese nationals, Russian nationals, in order to get to the United States, you have had to have come to a country where you could have uh, claimed asylum and actually requested asylum in the United States. They are abusing our laws and the Trump administration has to fix that as well. But the immediate challenge is Title 42. We have got to get this passed. We are having positive bipartisan discussions. I hope that we're successful. Wow. So, and when would you be successful? Is this possible that you could actually get this passed in the next couple of days? And is the White no. House saying that the president, even if this were to be get through the House and the Senate, would the president sign it? I think if we, you know, frankly, I think Biden was hoping there was some way that Title 42 could stay on. He's gotten a lot of a lot of pressure from progressive liberals to end the title. Um, so I don't think that he would actively work against us. Uh, the, the problem is timing. It would probably, uh, in our best day, it would take three or four weeks to get it done. We've got to negotiate wow. this with the House or get it out of the House. But we're, we're going to work hard on it. It's critically yeah. important. And the, and the border communities are suffering. They're very dangerous. We've got to halt it. See, what, what, what we don't know, we can't predict, is what what happens in June or July or August or next fall. So we'll see whether or not your idea gets pushed. Yeah. Senator, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. Thank Tom you. Tillis, Republican from North Carolina.